expressionist painter, but it's classically based. Just a painter of New York City, painter of stuff, urban painter. Try to make it as simple as possible, save them a lot of grief. <laughs> So I was a kid in the back of the room who didn't pay any attention, just drew all the time. And so I finally found a good art school where you could learn classical drawing skills. I worked my way out of that. So working at Disneyland, doing portraits of people in the park. I'd sit down, I had to wear a pirate outfit, and they'd sit in front of me and you'd do a portrait of them. And I went to Hot Rod Magazine, I drew cars and for Motor Trend and Hot Rod, which is uh, I was really proud of that. That's a magazine I loved as a kid. And here I was in it, and I was like, wow, this is cool says. And I started working for uh, courtrooms. So I did like a Lee Marvin trial and uh, Synanon, guys who put rattlesnakes in mailboxes. So I did all those trials because you'd go to courtroom and draw people. And this skill I got from Disney World, Disneyland, and um, just gradually worked my way up from there. I did rock posters for CBS Records for a while. Initially, um, things were melting down in LA. I couldn't get, jobs were kind of collapsing. There wasn't as much to keep me going. And I wanted to work my way in the art world. It was all in New York. So I took an exploratory trip back, ended up in Times Square, because we didn't know where to stay. We're just, I don't know, I'm from California. So I thought, oh, Times Square, I've heard of that. And looking out the window, and there are guys smoking cigarettes with hats on, walking along, light snow coming down, like these 30 foot shadows, you know, women getting out of cabs. With high-heeled shoes and just seemed this is so cool these lights flashing felt like you're in an old movie so that's I said this is too much there's a lot of material here mm -hmm. so I think I was here a couple of years and I painted objects for a long time like giant staplers giant light bulbs hammers things and all of a sudden one day I said look I've had enough of this and I went for a walk in New York and walked up Times Square and the sky was like today just the color of freshly poured concrete and I was what I what am I doing all of a sudden the clouds cleared and it was like an epiphany. It was so bright, you know, this laser-like white light came screaming down the street. And, you know, the same characters, the guys from the Brill building with toupees like this and checkered suits and talking, you know, and they're running along the street, ballerinas and sweats and jeans walking the street and trash carting trucks and cops and kamikaze bike riders. And I said, okay, look at this. <laughs> Let's go to that moment. Uh, you, you want to think about the aspirations, hopes, and fears of everyone and what drives them on. What brings you to New York? What's the siren call that brings you here? Are you walking by a building and you're carrying much shit and you hear the tinkle of you know, ice cubes in a glass and someone laughing and cigar smoke and oh, I want to be in that penthouse one day. It's a cool party. Or you see somebody going by in a car and they're laughing off the theater and you go, I wish them well. You this is, mm -hmm. sounds cool, you know, and I want to be here. You look and see the come here, their gaze from the 16 foot tall woman in Times Square. And you go, oh, this is it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I want to do. It's like, just listen, listen for a story. And, uh, like I heard one guy, he's leaning against the wall, smoking a cigarette. And this little short guy next to him, the short guy said, uh, Hey, you want another cup of coffee? And the guy doesn't even look at him. He says, You want another cup of whoop ass? <laughs> Really? <laughs> so I wrote that down as fast as I could. And that anchored. Whatever I was doing on that corner, that anchored the mood. You know, like mm -hmm. there's some thugs. And, you know, it's just, you know, you say, listen for stories. You follow people. And then it has to say something. You have to have a feeling inside when you look at it. If you look at it, oh, okay, it's got all the elements. But so what? Then it's over. Get rid of that. Mm -hmm. One time my son helped me. We were, um, he always seems to be there when I need him. And we cut up. 200 paintings with a box cutter and threw them away about 10 years ago. I'm moving from Long Island City, Queens up here. And I said, look, I'm just going to save the world a lot of grief. These are not good paintings. You know, just, it's cathartic. It's like this great moment. You never set out to make a nice piece of art. And that's why I tell kids all the time. Your mom has enough stuff for their walls. You know, Just don't set out to make art. Just set out to get information. You get a narrative. You get a story. And you... you, you Try to say something that you're feeling about a scene. You know, you try to capture something. Don't try to make a painting because you'll ruin it. It's like if you set out to make, oh, I'm gonna make this evocative piece of music. Mm. Trust me, you're not. Mm. You're gonna be Kenny G making some, you know, <laughs> or Yanni or something. You're gonna make something that 
it's going to sound all right, and at the end it's like eating a sugar donut, and you wish you had mm -hmm. galleries say, why don't you give me more of these paintings? Mm -hmm. We got a bike rider and a cat, and I want you know, some more like this. You know, okay, if they come out, you know, I'll let you have them, or I'll try that. But once you try to paint to please someone, or you do a painting to sell a painting, you generally you still make a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of mistakes made in this type of work. Either works or it does. If it doesn't work, paint it over. Um, I think when you're younger, you think everything you do is just, oh, this is great. You know, I did it again. You know, and maybe you didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to come back and look at it. And I think you're a little harder on yourself as you get older. You want to look at it, make sure it's right. Mm -hmm. If it's not working, you have to have a good bullshit detector. You know, you have to be in a garage and. Come out and look at it. Is this what I want to leave? I'm, if I get hit by a bus, is this a painting I want to leave? You mm -hmm. go, hey, it's not. You know, what am I doing? You know, you're not just churning. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's right. <laughs>